The caption for this morning meditation, fire while meditating, fire while meditating. Uh, this morning this meditation is going to be different, not a very deep sermon or anything. I'm going to share with you a number of Bible passages, passages well, well, very much known to us. They are neither intriguing are mystic, very plain passages. The very reading of these passages will be God's message to you. In Psalm 63, the reading what we had, in verse 6, he says, When I remember thee upon my bed, when I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches, when I meditate on thee, in the night watches. This morning, I'm going to speak to you about a very important topic, meditation. Something that is totally forgotten in the Christian uh, churches very much. We have got prayers, fasting prayers, praises, uh, we have got charitable works, preachings, so many spiritual exercises we do. But meditation is very much forgotten in Christendom, especially in many of the spiritual churches. Here in Psalm 63, the psalmist David, he was in the wilderness. The place was making no difference. He was able to feel the presence of God. He says, as I, uh, I have seen thee in the sanctuary, as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, even in the wilderness, he says, I pray, I meditate thee upon the bed. The literal word in verse 6, I meditate on thee in the night watches. I remember thee upon my bed. The literal meaning is not a bed in the palace. The literal meaning is squirrel bed or a sparrow bed. Sparrow bed or a squirrel bed. So in the wilderness he had some grass or some straw for his bed, like a squirrel or a sparrow. There he was meditating on the Lord. What is that meditation? Uh, he says in verse 2, to see thy power and thy glory. And in verse 3, uh, because thy loving kindness, remembering his loving kindness, in verse 4, he says, I just lift up my hands and bless you. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. When I meditate, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When? When I remember thee upon my squirrel or sparrow bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. So meditation is a very powerful tool. I'm going to share with you seven points on meditation, just to start that exercise of meditating. How you can start that meditation. Before that, I love to draw your attention to some of the Bible passages. You can make a note of this passage. I do believe that most of you got a writing material with you, so you can write these passages and you can meditate. Number one. Psalm 92, first three verses, verses 1, 2, and 3. It's a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. A psalm or a song for the Sabbath day. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night, to show forth Thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of strings. Upon an instrument. So he is gifted with playing on instruments. So upon an instrument of strings. Maybe today you can use a guitar or a violin. And upon the psaltery. Upon the harp. With a solemn sound. There's a wrong translation because they talked about the instrument of strings, psaltery, uh, harp, etc. 
the bible translator used the word solemn sound it is not a solemn sound with pondering with musing with meditation so i will remember the i will play on instruments and i will be meditating on the is not just a solemn sound it is pondering with meditation i will be singing i will be playing on instruments Psalm 39 verses 1 to 3 Psalm 39 verses 1 to 3 I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me I was dumb with silence I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred my heart was hot within me while i was musing while i was meditating while i was musing the fire burned while i was musing the fire burned then spake i with my tongues see it was a different situation but i will let you know later how you can kindle a fire burning within you already a hot already you are fervent for the lord but your heart heart can bring fire when you do meditation when you do meditation that's what even the people of the world say about it the meditation gives that energy the fire it fires a positive energy is emitted So the more you meditate the more you ponder over on positivity positive energy is produced the more you ponder over negative things negative energy is produced the fire is produced whether it's a positive fire or a negative fire based on what you meditate what you ponder over the more you think about what the more you get power energy the fire is produced fire while meditating uh, psalm 19 verse 14 just make a note of these verses psalm 19 verse 14 let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart so the meditation is done in the heart the meditation is done in the heart and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight not only the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart must be acceptable in god's sight o lord my strength and my redeemer from 5 verse 1 some 5 verse 1 give ear to my words give ear to my words o lord consider my meditation not only the lord should consider our prayer not only the lord should consider our charitable works but the lord should consider what you meditate in your heart what you deeply think in your heart what you ponder over in your heart the lord should consider that it is not only the lord considers what you speak what you pray what you preach what you do the lord should consider what you ponder what you are meditating in your heart what is meditation what is meditation before i could just give you a definition of what is meditation as we understand i love to tell you one small anecdote henry ford the car manufacturing giant once he hired some experts to study his business and to give them a guidelines to find out where there is a wastage or where they can Uh, how more employees or uh, how they can uh, how they can be cost effective etc etc so they had a team of experts so for a week or so they were studying the complete structure of the company and is the time that they were to give report uh, to henry ford so the chief of the team said said everything is fine one thing we don't understand in in your office in a chamber 
There is a man sitting quiet, keeping his legs on the desk. He is not doing anything. And you are paying him salary. That, that we consider that's a waste. He's just sitting quiet, keeping his legs on the table and doing nothing. And you are paying him. Henry Ford said, because he is keeping like that only, our company is thriving. When there was a crisis, he gave us an idea which saved millions of dollars for us. He gave an idea. Now, he is sitting quietly, contemplating, and he, give, he is giving his ideas. He is paid for giving his ideas. In a very simple way to understand meditation. In Christianity, we generally think it is a wastage. I am also ashamed, I didn't preach much about meditation. I didn't preach much about meditation. I had never heard many sermons, Christian sermons on meditation. The TMs, Transcendental Meditation, Yoga, etc, etc. It's more spoken by many other Gurujis. From the Bible, we fail to teach the church meditation. We feel it is a waste. Prayer, praises, dances, worship, retreats, Bible studies, seminars, crusades. We are going after those things, but we fail to teach the church meditation. We feel it is a waste. Meditation brings the total strength to the church. From this day onwards, I encourage the church to spend more time on meditation. I don't know from where you rob the time. Maybe from your cooking, maybe from your eating, maybe from watching the TV, maybe from your chatting over the phone, or spending time in the social media, from your sleep, I don't know from where you are going to rob the time, but we must have time for meditation. That saves millions of dollars. That saves millions of dollars. So the transcendent, transcendental meditation or yoga, the meditation, they talk about so many things. But there's a major difference between their meditation and what the Bible says about meditation. In most of those TMs, they meditate on emptiness. They meditate on nothingness. Or they meditate on nonsensical way, words, where a sound. That sound makes no sense. Oh. They meditate on that sound. Or somewhere. Do, 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 do. It makes no sense. It's a nonsensical sound, nonsensical word, emptiness. It's very dangerous. When you create an emptiness within you, any force can occupy that area. They, are, they say they are relaxing their mind. They are seeing inward. 100% is right, the meditation is seeing inward. When I meditate, I cannot speak to you. Meditation is not speaking to somebody. Meditation is always inward. Now I cannot sit here and meditate. Now I am speaking to you. This is not meditation. This is preaching or teaching. So what is meditation? I give one small definition. Meditation is a natural method to place the human soul in conscious contact with God, to place the human soul in conscious contact with God. It doesn't mean that I will not be out of mind. I'll be conscious. It's not unconscious. It is not transcending. I'm conscious. I know what I'm doing. But I'm placing my soul in a conscious contact with God. Where is that God? God who is within me and permeates the entire cosmos. He is all over the cosmos. And also He is in heaven. He is in heaven. God is everywhere. 
And God is in me. God is in me. So I am talking to the God who is in me. I am meditating on him. I am making a conscious, my soul makes a conscious contact with him. What they soul, Adma Paramadma Vodhyanaidu. Even soul communing with God, God within us. To understand it in a better way, in a Christian way, that's a meditation. It's not just looking, uh, just thinking, getting into emptiness. It is not just producing a nonsensical sound or muttering a nonsensical word. Nonsensical, I don't say it in a bad sense. Nonsensical means it makes no sense. Muttering a word that is totally nonsensical. To come closer in a Christian way, I just put it like this. Christian meditation is the process of deliberately touching on specific thoughts, the Bible passages, specific thoughts on the Bible passages and reflecting and musing on their meaning in the context of the greatness of God. Maybe a little complicated, I'll break it into pieces, then you'll understand. What, what, do, we, what do I understand by Christian meditation? Christian meditation is the process of deliberately, I do it deliberately, deliberately focus, I focus on specific thoughts in the Bible, based on the Bible. I understand God based on the Bible. I understand what God can do based on the Bible. God can divide the Red Sea, how do I know it is in the Bible? Jesus is coming again, how do I know it is in the Bible? So my total meditation is based on the thoughts in the Bible. What he can do in the life of Abraham. What he has done to a man who was 38 years impotent. A woman suffering from bleeding for 12 long years. So what God can do, what this Jesus can do, what that Jesus spoke, everything it is based on the Bible. So my meditation is basically from the Bible, reflecting and musing on their meaning. Reflecting and musing on their meaning. The Bible says, I will not leave you, I will not forsake. What does it mean? What does it mean to me? I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. There was a woman suffering from 12 long years, suffered by many a doctor, and she was not healed. She heard about Jesus. She came to him. It's just an incident. Incident that happened in the past history. It is recorded for me. I muse on that. What that can do for me? What's the message I get out of it? So meditation is, Christian meditation is the process of deliberately focused on specific thoughts in the Bible, Bible passages, and reflecting and musing on their meaning in the context of the greatness of God. This God is great. This God is great. He can divide the Red Sea. He can make a way in the river Jordan. He can make the wall of Jericho fall. He can make an important person walk. He can give life to somebody who was taken in the bath for burial. I meditate. Every Bible passage speaks about the greatness of God. You cannot meditate outside the Bible passage. You cannot understand God outside the Bible passage. To understand God in a Christian way, only you have to understand God through the Bible passages. That's a Christian meditation. So today it's a small lesson. How can you have a meaningful meditation? I'm going to give you, give you seven points. How can you start with this meditation? This is the message I never preached earlier and I'm ashamed of it. I must have taught you to do your, I taught you to do fasting prayer or prayer or worshipping the Lord, speaking in tongues, etc. But meditation is a very good spiritual exercise you must do that will bring a profit of millions of dollars in a spiritual world. Number one, I really kindly make a note of these verses. 
Psalm 104 verse 34. Psalm 104 verse 34. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Number one, meditate on the Lord. Meditate on the Lord. In the passage we read Psalm 63 verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Meditate on God. Just imagine the name of the Lord, the names of God. Sit quietly somewhere. Spend a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, half an hour, 30 minutes spent meditating on the names of God. From your Bible passage, you can get those names. What God can do, what God is, who God is, who Jesus is. What he has done for others, he will do for you. It's no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he can do for us. What he has done in the life of Abraham, he can do it in my life. What he has done with the life of Paul, he can do it with my life. He is no respecter of person. In Leonard Raven, he writes in one book, Elisha cried, where is God of Elijah? Where is God of Elijah? He says, God of Elijah is still there. Where is Elijah? God of Elijah is still there. Where is Elijah now? Meditate on what God of Elijah can do. So meditate on the names of God. It means on the characteristics of God. That will give a tremendous strength in us. Every day spend some time. Even when you worship God, when you praise God. Remember God and praise Him. God of Creator. You called out something to come into existence where it was, when it was nothing, when it was not there. You called that come into existence. Out of darkness you called light. Meditate on it. He is a God who can call light out of darkness. What is darkness? Darkness is the absence of light. There is no light, then it is called darkness. When there was no light, he is able to call out light out of darkness. Meditate on that God. My dear brother, my dear sister. Number one. I just give a brief, there's only brief points in the verses today. How can you start your exercise, spiritual exercise on meditation? Focus. Let your soul deliberately be one with you at God. God who is within you. Sit and think about that God. What the Bible, how the Bible reveals about that God. Only from Bible we understand who that God is. Otherwise our understanding may be wrong. People have got different gods because they create gods out of their own imagination. They create God out of their own imagination. They got an awareness of God. And they create that God. And as they ponder, as they meditate, they create God with thousand heads, or they create God with some ten hands, or they create God in a different way, they create God in a different form. When they want to think about the power of God, when they think about the beauty of God, in different ways they worship God. But we understand God only from the Bible. So number two, is not only meditating on God or the name of God, the second one, meditate on His law. Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2 put together. Blessed is the man that delight, uh, whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law doth he meditate day and night. Meditating in the law of God. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt uh, meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and that thou shalt have good success. 
So meditating on the law of God. When we say meditating on the law of God, it is not sutta dittang. Many a time when we say law, we immediately think about the rules and the regulations. But the literal biblical meaning, it is not rules and regulation. When he says the law of God, it's the principles which bind the spiritual realm. The law of the Lord are the spiritual principles which bind the spirit world. Say for example, we say the law of center of gravity. The law of center of gravity. If I just drop it, it has to fall. It is a law. The earth pulls it down. Earth pulls it down. It doesn't go up. We say law of flotation. Archimedes principle. There are laws in mathematics. Laws in chemistry. They are the laws, they are the principles which bind this physical, geographical world. We call them law. Naturally they exist. Naturally they exist in this physical world. Similarly, there are spiritual laws which bind God and man. So meditate on the laws. Ask and it shall be given. It's a principle. It's not a commandment. You must ask. Otherwise I'll break your head. No, God doesn't say. It's a biblical principle. Say for example, many a time the uh, physical, geographical laws are taken as uh, what I can say, prototype to understand the spiritual laws. Say when you sow, you reap. It's a physical law. It's a law in uh, agriculture. When you sow, you can reap. One grain of rice or wheat may bring in a sheaf of 30 grains or 60 grains or 100 grains. You sow one bag of rice, you may reap 30 bags of rice or 60 bags of rice. Or you may even reap hundred bags of rice. It's a, just an ordinary principle. Principle in agriculture. Similarly, when you sow in the ministry, in the Lord's kingdom, you will reap. Maybe thirtyfold or sixtyfold or hundredfold, you may reap. It's a principle. If you sow, you will reap. You sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow liberally, you reap liberally. Then you must, not sowing, you must know, you must know the field. It's not on the path. It's not on a rock. It's not in a thorny place. You must sow in a good field. And the field must be prepared for sowing. Again, not only sowing, God should bless the seed. When God blesses the seed, only there will be a good offspring. So these are the principles and these principles are applied in the spiritual life. These principles are applied in the spiritual life. So from Genesis to Revelation, choose what are the Bible principles. When we draw closer to him, he will draw closer to us. It's a principle. When you honor the Lord's day, you shall have delight You'll walk on the high places of the earth and God will satisfy you with the, uh, with the promise of your father Jacob. It's a Bible principle. So meditate on those principles. Select from Genesis to Revelation. You don't seek the Lord and you will not find him. You will not find him. There is a powerful passage. When I called you, you didn't answer. When I called you, you didn't answer. In your trouble, you will call me and I will not answer. When I called you, you didn't answer. In your trouble, you will call me and I will not answer. It's a Bible principle. 
So when the Bible says meditate on the law, it is not the do's and don'ts. You can have a good notebook with you. You need not search the entire scripture at one stretch. In your daily passage, jot down who God is. Note down what are the Bible principles for your blessings. What is the law in which the spirit world is functioning? The laws which can bind God. God works on those laws. God works on those laws. When you apply those laws, it's easier. You want to draw water from a well, a very deep well. You want to draw water from the well. You put a bucket with a rope. You take the water. You lift it up. It's very hard. You have to lift it up. Because you are working against the law of nature. You are working against the center of gravity. It's, it's very difficult, very hard. You put a pulley, rope through that pulley, now you are pulling towards the earth, it is easier. It's a principle. You are working towards the law of nature. Earlier when you are drawing water, you are working against the law of nature. When you are pulling, using a pulley, you are working towards the nature, it is easier. Similarly, when you understand the law of the Bible, law of God, when you work towards the law of God, it's easier for you to receive God's blessings. That way he says, I'll meditate on his law day and night. And whatever I do, it will prosper. The same thing in Joshua we read. If this law, if you meditate on this law day and night, whatever you do, it shall prosper. You, you shall have good success. Because you are working towards God's principles. So you cannot imagine failure you will have success. I'll just show you two more verses. Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 148. Mine eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. So for this meditation, it's not necessary. You have to go to your solitary place. You have to do it early morning at the sunrise. You can do it any time, even on your bed. That posture is not important. It's not that you have to squat your legs in such a way. You have to keep your hands like that. Maybe they are good physical exercises. I'm not against it. But Christian meditation is not that. You can be on your bed. But meditate on his principles. And they say, my eyes prevent the night watches. I could not sleep. When I think about the laws, when I can think about God's principles, I cannot sleep. Say, I honor the Lord's day and I know what are the blessings I received. Because it's a law, it's a principle. One day for him. And I taught that to my children. They honor the Lord's day. They are blessed. I shared that in the church. Many of the believers, they believe that they honored the Lord's day, the Lord blessed. And in our church, I can say, those who seek the Lord with all their heart, we know how much they are blessed. I can give a number of testimonies. From zero, how the Lord has made them all heroes. So apply Bible principles in your life, you will be successful. So meditate on the Lord's, meditate on the Lord's principles, or I call that law. Now the third one, I call this the commandments, the statutes, the precepts. There may be a nuance and difference in all these things. Now I'm not getting into a study, then I'm not getting into a word study. Commandments, precepts, and statutes. Psalm 119, verse 15. 119, verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts, commandments, statutes. The literal meaning is mandates. It is mandatory. It is a must. You should not, either you should do it or you should not do it. 
There are certain things what you should do it. There are certain things you should not do it. It is mandatory for human beings. In the Old Testament, the rabbis have noticed about uh, 613 commandments. 613 commandments. And they say out of 613 commandments, 365 are uh, with negativity, 248 with positivity. And today many people say those commandments are for, not for the New Testament. It's rubbish. Last week I spoke to you in the message council of God. You can have uh, explained that in a detailed way. Jesus never came to break any of the commandments. We have to practice all the commandments. See, those commandments should be understood, very briefly I reiterate today, should be understood in three different ways. One is, commandments based on hygiene, health. So today in your situation, in this 21st century, maintain that hygiene, what you have to do for that hygiene, you do it. The health. So after the childbirth, or during certain times, what all you can eat, what all you should not eat, how can you have a family life? Everything is good for human beings. It doesn't mean that we are in the New Testament, we should be lawless people. In many a time, the modern thinkers are becoming lawless. But Jesus never came to break laws, Jesus came to fulfill laws. We are given grace not to become lawless, we are given grace to fulfill what God wants us to do. Number two, moral laws. Can we break moral laws? Honor your father and mother, it's a moral law. It's not for Old Testament or New Testament. You should not cover somebody's servant. You should not cover somebody's donkey. You should not cover somebody's bike or car. Because Bible says donkey, today we can say somebody's bike or car, don't cover it. It is a moral law. In Ten Commandments, I take Nine Commandments, and one commandment, remember the Lord said, oh, that is not for the New Testament, how rubbish it is. But how do we do it? Not in letter, but in spirit. Not in letter, but in spirit. And the third one is ceremonial laws, Levitical laws. All ceremonial laws must be fulfilled in us through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Our sins must be forgiven, our transgression must be forgiven, we must have a peace offering, we must be reconciled with God, everything must be done. So all the laws are to be fulfilled in us, either hygienic laws or moral laws or ceremonial laws, but in a spiritual way. They are the commandments, the statutes, precepts, honor your parents. It's not just a principle. It is a commandment. Honor your parents. Don't covet others' property. Don't covet others' bike. Don't covet others' lifestyle. Don't lie. All liars will go to heaven, uh, go, go to hell. All liars, white lie, green lie, yellow lie, whatever the lie may be. All liars will go to hell. So here the psalmist says, I will meditate in thy precepts, or commandments, statutes, mandates, and have respect unto thy ways. These precepts, these mandates, reveal us his way, how we should have our lifestyle. What is right, what is wrong, we understand from his laws. Grace is not against law. Grace gives us strength to fulfill God's laws. What law could not do it itself? The law says don't lie. Because the law says don't lie, I don't have the grace not to lie. But God gives me grace that I don't lie. My dear brother, my dear sister, Psalm 119 verse 23. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. Verse 48. My hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. 
what you have appointed for me. The word statutes is slightly different from commandment. Commandments is mandate and statutes, what is appointed for me. I am destined to do it. It is appointed unto me. I have to do it. It is appointed unto me. Psalm, uh, verse 78, let the proud be ashamed for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate in thy precepts. In thy precepts. So remember this thing. Again I tell you in your daily passage. What is the commandment the Lord has given me? What are the do's and the don'ts I should follow? What are the do's and what are the don'ts I should follow? Make a note of it. Bring a record. Make sure whether you are doing all the do's. Whether you don't do all the don'ts. Follow it. Sit and meditate on it. Why the Bible says that I should love my wife? It's a commandment, it's a mandate. Love your wife. It's a commandment. Obey your husband, it's a commandment. Why the Bible says obey your husband? Obey your husband as you obey the Lord. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Do I obey my husband as I obey the Lord? Or I want to change the Bible precept. Is it mandatory for me? Is it possible that I should obey my husband as I obey the Lord? Do I love my wife as, I, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church? Do I do it? Even I don't give my purse to my wife. Do I really mean that I give myself to my wife? Do I obey that commandment? Think about it for a minute. So number one, meditate on God. Number two, meditate on God's laws and principles. Number three, meditate on God's commandments, precepts and statutes. Number four, meditate on the wondrous works of God. That gives a tremendous power. Remember that Henry Ford story. That man sitting quiet, and because of that, millions of dollars are saved in that company. He gave idea. So meditate on the tremendous work of God. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. In English we read talk. The translation says meditate, ponder, think deeply and talk. Med it's not just talk. Meditate, ponder, think deeply and talk, yea, of the wondrous works of the Lord. To save time, I'll just give you the Bible passages, Psalm 77 verse 12, Psalm 119 verse 27, 105 verse 2, Job 37 verse 14, Psalm 143 verse 5. Meditate on the wondrous works of God. Start from creation. How God created. There was darkness over the face of the earth. God said let there be light. From where that light came. Think for a minute. From where that light came. The Bible says in Isaiah and also it's reiterated in Hebrews out of dark in the Romans out of darkness God called out light. Let there be light. From where that light came? Out of darkness. Out of darkness the light came. What is darkness? Philosophically darkness is nothing but the absence of light. It is called darkness because there is no light. And out of the darkness God called light out. Think for a minute. Think for a minute. Won't he change your darkness? That is why that man was sitting and keeping his desk on the table and he's paid heavily. He gives ideas. Similarly, more than your prayer, more than your fasting, more than speaking in tongues, sit and think quietly. How did God call light out of darkness for a minute? A fire will be burning within you. 
a positive energy will be created in you yes my god can call anything out of nothing i worship god i believe in a god a god that is revealed in the bible he can call light out of darkness in mara he called sweetness out of bitterness he called sweetness out of bitterness that water was bitter then how did that sweetness came out of bitterness sweetness came my god can do it out of sorrow joy can come out of all negative situations a blessed situation can come your negativity can be changed into positivity i am worshiping worshiping a god who can do it abram was 100 years old his potency was lost his wife was already barren now she has lost her womanhood can a child be born now i got two options either i believe the bible or i don't believe the bible if i believe the bible when my body is dead when the womb of sarah was dead when abram's body is dead he lost his potency all situation become negative out of that womb in a very natural way abram can regain his potency and sarah can get her womanhood a child can be conceived born and it can be breastfed it is possible now i am left with two options either you believe it or you don't believe it if you believe it what god has done in the life of abram he is able to do in my life he is able to do in my life meditate on his wondrous work meditate on his wondrous work sit and spend time on that again and again i can go on and on what he de- did in the life of jacob what he did in the life of joseph what he did in the life of moses or david or in the new testament meditate on his wondrous works his healing power his quickening power his power on multiplicity oh it will be mind blowing meditate on his wondrous work to save time i'm going i'm running fast so number 5 psalm 119 verse 99 psalm 119 verse 99 meditate on his testimonies the bible we don't read the word bible anywhere in the bible it is a book of laws and also is the book of testimonies it's a book of testimonies as i said what he has done in the life of david what he has done in the life of uh, the man suffering for 38 years the woman 12 years uh, suffering from bleeding and the boy who was dead and taken for burial what did he do there was on Saul who was against the church what did he do so in the whole bible we have got the book of testimonies not only in the bible in the church we hear so many testimonies not only in the bible not only in the church in our life we know god has done so many things god has done so many things there's so many testimonies in our life so these testimonies give us the strength meditate on this testimony what he has done in the bible what he has done in the lives of other people what has he done in your life meditate on this and you will have a tremendous strength and number 6 is very very important isaiah chapter 38 was 18 meditate on the truth something unchanged yesterday today and forever it is unchange truth cannot change truth cannot be different in america and different in india truth cannot be different the days of uh, paul and the days of pastor sundaram in the days of robert simon truth cannot change if something can change that is not truth meditate on the truth and finally psalm 49 verse 3 my mouth shall speak of wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding the meditation of my heart shall be understanding my dear brother my dear sister what is understanding i have explained it many a time 
understanding means it stands under it stands under another word for understanding is substance substance stands beneath understanding the bible says by wisdom the house is built by understanding it is established what is the philosophic meaning of understanding understanding means acting positively on the information received acting positively on the information received that is understand my dear brother my dear sister meditate on understand what do you mean by meditate on understanding very briefly i tell you so just don't get scared there's an information we, there's a knowledge we all know that surely we will die anybody has got a doubt the coming of the lord is delayed we all will die robert simon will die i know it number 2 i know death can come at any time death can come at any time an embryo can be can die 6 years 16 years 60 years any time death can come in any form death can come it is not necessary we should be sick and die is not necessary we should get heart attack or heart failure when we are crossing the road it can take place when you are traveling in a bus or train or your car or flight i'm not scaring anybody i'm telling you the truth it's a knowledge it's an information number 1 death is certain number 1 on anybody it can come number 3 at any form it can is not necessary we should be sick is not necessary we must have a weak heart it's not necessary we must have a renal failure nothing we can't say what we can't say it should be the cause for death the best cause for death when you forget to breathe you are dead or when you fail to breathe you are dead that's all okay now this is the information do i act positively on the information i have got am i ready to die now then i got understand then i got understand no 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 i am not ready no 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 i am not ready now then i don't have understanding that's a very simple thing i got knowledge but that knowledge has not helped me understand the knowledge has not helped me understand so there are a lot of knowledge we have got act based on that knowledge say a house is built with wisdom established with understanding when the wife understands her husband in other words she acts positively on the information she has received about her husband or when the husband acts positively on the information he has received about his wife he knows that he has got a headache there's the information he acts positively on the information he has received he'd be happy they would be happy the relationship will be established it is not enough that i know that she has got headache i must act positively on the information i have received that is understanding so meditate on these seven things just i'll tell you as a rule how are you going to start i don't know one of the easiest ways i tell you it's what i thought 7 days a week you can put a calendar you can have a plan or the spirit leads or you can have a plan sunday i'm going to meditate on god god's characteristics god's personality etc monday i'm going to meditate on god's laws principles on which god works the natural biblical spiritual principles and tuesday in a very telescopic way i slide into his commandments statutes and precepts do's and don'ts then i'm going to meditate maybe i don't know thursday or wednesday i'm going to meditate on god's tremendous work what god has done in the past what can god can do in my life i'm going to meditate on it maybe another day i'm going to meditate on the testimonies 
Just every day I take one character, or I think about a testimony that is given in the church. My child was suffering from a third-rate cancer. In our church it happened. Third-rate cancer, third-degree cancer. The doctor said the child was dead. A dead child we brought to the church. You know, we all know that. A Hindu man brought the dead child to the church. The Lord performed a wonderful miracle. Years have passed by now. She is married. She has got children. The whole family is in our church. If the Lord can do it in the life of that brother, that family, can God, Lord, do something in our life? How many people are delivered from this type of deadly diseases in our church? So one day you sit and meditate only on the testimonies in the Bible. The testimonies the Lord has done in your life. The Lord has done what He has done in my life. Even today for the glory of the Lord I tell you, my strength is drawn from the meditation of the testimonies what the Lord has done in my life, in our life. In many a critical juncture, how the Lord has proved that He is with me. Today that is the strength for me. And meditate on the truth. What Paul preached, has that changed today? Can I change it today? Can the church change it today? Can any synod, any, any body can change what the Bible says? If it is changed, can that be truth? Am I following the truth? Meditate on the truth. Not the lost, but not the least, meditate on understand. Meditate on understanding. Whether I act positively on the information I have received, meditate on it. Whether I act positively on the information I have received, I know this will happen. Do you act positively on the information? I know Jesus is coming back. Do you act positively on the information I have received? Meditate on it. Just for conclusion, Psalm 55 verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon, evening and morning at noon, will I pray and cry loud and he shall hear my voice. It is not that, will I pray and cry loud, the literal meaning, I dig deep, I dig deep and meditate and cry aloud. Morning and evening and at noon time, I meditate deeply and pray. The conclusion, let your prayer, your petitions made known to the Lord, your cry to the Lord, be based on your meditation. Let your meditation be based on the Word of God. The Word of God, the divided into different parts, meditating on God's name, meditating on God's laws, meditating on God's principles, God's commandments, statutes, uh, God's uh, precepts, what the testimonies, God's truth, God's tremendous works, more than that, you are understanding on that. That will give you a profit of million dollars, not in the form of money, but your spiritual wealth. Shall we pray? Dear Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, Lord. Lord, help us practice this exercise of meditation from today in a deeper way. Let this meditation bring fire within us, O oh Lord. Let this meditation release a spiritual positive energy in us that we could shine more for you. We can do great exploits in your name, O oh Lord. You are a great God. Help us do great things for you. Lord, now with our prayer, with our fasting, with our praises, with our charity, works of charity, with our uh, spreading the gospel, help us, O oh Lord, spend more time in meditation, sitting alone with you, where our soul will have communion with, the, with your soul. We thank you, we praise you, we worship you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen.